Ice cream cold, uses microwave, stares dumbfounded. Sometimes I blow out my ice cream before I take a bite. Have no idea why. Brain. Food is very temperature. Also brain. No worry, learned from soup, know what to do. This is the tone in which my brain talks about everything. Then congratulations, you've got ape brain! A rare condition that affects basically all of us. <laughs> There's this one video I have of people complaining about this one dude who was like, I microwave my iced tea because it's too cold, and everyone else just dumbfounded that that person exists and is real and lives in reality. Hello everybody and welcome to Calvis! My name is Lumo and today we are looking at r slash Tumblr! A subreddit dedicated to those wacky posts from that crazy cyan site we all forgot about years ago. Let's just get right into it. Conversation I had with a 96 year old woman. You know you should... You know how your parents probably say things like You were born with the internet and you don't know what it's like to live without it? Y yeah. Well, my parents said that to me about electricity. Man, it's so weird to think about a time when, you know, electricity was a luxury item and now we just all have it and it's just so commonplace that it's more obscene when we don't have it. I think that's really cool. That is progression. Whoever is playing this game of civilization got the next step in technology twice. And I really like that. Mostly because it has allowed me to get this as a job instead of having to actually work. Whoop! <laughs> Things to bring back in books! Chapter titles! Actually having a synopsis on the back instead of reviews no one will read. Some excellent additions from the notes. Maps! Indexes of characters and places with pronunciation. Numbering books in a series on the spine. Table of content. What are you, those are missing now? Look, maybe it's just cause I've been reading like the backlog of the Mistborn author books, but like straight up and down, I feel like I've always had table of contents, maps and phonetic pronunciation. I also just read a, a book about a bunch of Vikings stopping like God. That was weird. Like, I feel like these things are common in books. Maybe this is just cause I really like fantasy, but I, I haven't noticed this missing. That being said, I can see why people want these things. Cause all of these things are just, Beautiful. So yeah, bring him back. Bring him back. An Australian guy, Bill Morgan, was declared dead for 14 minutes. He somehow survived. To celebrate his survival, he bought a scratch card and won, 20, uh, and won a $27,000 car. The news media asked him to reenact the scratch card moment, so he bought another card and won another $2,500,000 jackpot. God is trying to apologize. <laughs> Crap, my bad, bruh. <laughs> Yo, my grandfather actually died like multiple times before he actually died. And like every time he just got more like, not into it, but he just found it like more and more funny. Like not done yet, I came back. <laughs> Man though, this dude, this dude is like just having a wonderful time. I hope Australia has better laws on like how much, the, how many taxes come out of that. Cause like you might end up paying for that car and you end up losing half of your rewards when it comes to like American lotteries. So like this dude at the very least would be in the pit for what is that? I'm just gonna say, you know, 1350 plus, you know, 125, that's what, like 168 roughly? Yeah, he'd be in for about $168,000, which is a little bit butts, but he does have the money to cover that. Today I learned Albert Einstein was a real person. I always thought he was only a theoretical physicist. Jeff, please, we're begging you to change your URL. <laughs> that is such a good dad joke. I'm stealing this. Look, people have told me I have dad energy, not daddy energy, but dad energy, as in like smoking a, uh, smoking a pipe, sitting by the wood place, reading the newspaper. I'm gonna say, how you doing sport? Every time you walk into the room, like that kind of energy. This is right up my alley and I am completely here for it. I, I love this. This is so incredibly moronic. Ah, shower thoughts. The reason I stay up late is because I don't want my free time to end and tomorrow to start. I, I feel so called out and yet, so understood. <laughs> I do this every morning. I look, I operate from 5 a.m. to like 6 to 7 at night. That's my cycle. That's when I'm working. That's when I'm productive because that's when I want to be productive because I got a lot of stuff to do. But there is a brief, beautiful moment from 7 to 730 where I am in the shower 
and I do not think, I do not feel, I exist in the water and it's so wonderful. I feel this on a spiritual level. That, that, that makes complete sense to me. Doing the things that you shouldn't do to avoid the things you should do because the things you should do don't have to be done right now. Maybe when you delay your game, you should do a bug compilation trailer to help convince fans that they don't want the game as it is. Blooper Reel! I would totally like to see blooper reels of top shelf games, even ones that have been released. I mean, uh, shout out to Chrome Cat, because basically what they do, even do it on hardware releases. You ever heard a Switch scream? Because you can find it there. Like, honestly, I, I would love this. Like, look, and as now that I'm actually in game development in some capacity, like, I see how much work goes into it, and I know how much it hurts like everyone to have to delay the game because it's an admission that you weren't able to meet your own stand. Well, not meet your own standards, but meet your timetables. And sometimes, like Cyberpunk, those timetables are completely unrealistic, and you know that happens. But when it's something that you made it and you know intentionally lacks and you don't hit it, you're sitting there working on it the day after it was supposed to release. Like, oh man, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and then there's a the whole like post-launch support. Oh, it's 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 butts, dude. It's super butts. Stop. Oh, I gotta clap for this one. Stop making shows dark for the aesthetic. I can't see. Also, stop whispering. I can't hear. I think I did that right. I think I got the right amount of claps. My hands hurt. <laughs> I did that very forcefully. But no, seriously, I completely agree. Uh, I have trouble watching them on my monitor because the uh, the dock values are so low, but to turn them up washes out scary games and I love me some scary game. So please, please make it, make it less dark and stop freaking whispering. Yeah, novel idea. In a world where everyone is born with a countdown with how many French fries they are allowed to eat before death, one young man, me, is born with an infinity symbol. He grows up thinking it's an eight, so he never eats any fries. He's teased and taunted by the high fry kids. Then he eats his first fry on his 18th birthday. The number doesn't change, but the rest of his world does. I <laughs> what? <laughs> So much to unpack here! A society where your position is determined by the amount of french fries you can eat. That's like, that's, this is, this is night blogging. This is just straight up and down night blogging. This is the original proto shit posting. This is amazing. I hate it. If someone made pixel art of mulch, I'd be a very happy boy. Enjoy your mulch. Go so back to the time I didn't realize that mulch was the name of someone's for soda. <laughs> Oh, that's the plot twist I was not expecting. Holy shit. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> they even went out of the way to do that because they thought someone wanted to because a lot of mulch. Oh my god. I don't know why I'm having like conniptions over this, but that's so powerful. There's no ill will, just misunderstanding. It's beautiful. Remember when every girl wanted this phone? Yo, if you had this phone back in 2005, you were the coolest bitch on the block. I didn't know this was a thing. My dad had this phone. Then your dad was the coolest bitch on the block. No exceptions. <laughs> Yo, my mom had one of these, dude. I guess that also makes her the coolest. Oh, yeah. We don't live on a block, so. Honestly, though, I... <laughs> These flip phones were cool. I hated texting back in the day. I actually still have my old, like, I think it's a Samsung Alias 2 with the, like, the keyboard and the flip-up screen. That thing was my jam! Oh, God, I got into so much trouble with that thing. It was, it was just so easy to text. I loved it. And now every, no, no smartphone has a keyboard. And I hate that I've come to, like, be better at that than physical typing on phone keyboards, but, you know, that's just a lot of good design, but man, man, these phones were like fashion items. It was amazing. And then you'd go to a con or you'd go to high school and you'd see that one girl with like 80 things hanging off it and you'd just be like, how is that not falling out of your pocket? You have like 88 yaoi pins on there. What are you doing? We as a society need to start hyping up all the pixel cows from video games. <laughs> Love is stored in the pixelated cow. Okay, cutest to least cute. I'm feeling bottom right, bottom left, top left, 
top right. Never been a fan of the Stardew cows, they look like chunky dogs. But that's okay. Some could say that cows are in fact chunky dogs, because they're big and friendly. Cows are so nice. I used to have be friends with a, a couple of farmers who live a couple of towns over, and every now and again I would go and visit their cow, and their cow was very nice, and I think we became friends. My professor asked me if I prefer Miss or Mr. because non-binary, and I accidentally said, Ya yeah boy, without thinking, so now I have a professor that calls me, Ya yeah boy Rogers, every time I see him. I, I'm not seeing the problem? <laughs> what up? It's ya boy! <laughs> That's like my favorite way to start streams. Like, it's so powerful. It's such a powerful turn of phrase. Like, it's a boy! I don't know why I find it so funny, but I chuckle and chuckle every time I see it. This is a good post. Out of the corner of my eye, I just mistook another student for a trash can and threw my trash at her. This is the most embarrassing moment of my life. But not as embarrassing as getting mistaken for a trash can! <laughs> no, be kind to each other! Man, I would be so offended if someone did this, like, just straight up and down. E like, even if it was a mistake, I'd be like, I, I look like a trash can? Wait, was it one of those trash cans that looks like Among Us? Are we getting into pattern recognition? Did your classmate look like Among Us? Yo, was your classmate sus at all? Is that, is that what's happening? Let me know. It's okay, you can tell me if they were sus. I won't tell. It's 2007. It's 2007. You're working on a PowerPoint for the school. It's about ancient Egypt. You select the papyrus font. Yes, perfect. <laughs> Dude, I'm feeling called out. This was absolutely me. There, there's so many things like this. You get me weirdly nostalgic. One of my personal favorites is it is the summer of 20... I want to say it's the summer of 2012. It's the, uh, yeah. It's the middle of the night, summer 2012, and you've fallen asleep while playing Destiny. And it was just like the Destiny menu music on like a soft fade with the sound of crickets. And I was just like, no, that can't be gone. It was, it was such a peaceful video. Like it was wonderful. Like people get bitter about the fact that time passes. And while I do miss things from my past, I find like a weird, genuine comfort in them. And I think that's a pretty wonderful thing to get. And that's all the time we have here today on Calvis. If you like this, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and maybe share it with a friend who could use some good old-fashioned Tumblr posts in that day. If you do want more r slash Tumblr, there'll be another one popping up in just a couple of seconds. And until then, my name has been Lumo, and I hope to see you in the very next Calvis video. Have a great rest of your day.